significant gun you're about to use back there. Can I see it? What if we told you that some of your favorite screen legends were gay? Which revelation will shock you the most? And which did you secretly suspect all along? Let's find out. You want to finish the drive? Where are we going? Abilene. Who's heading it? I am. Number one. Anthony Perkins wishes to be with someone different. Anthony Perkins, best known for his iconic role as Norman Bates in the Psycho films, led a complex personal life that included both heterosexual and homosexual relationships. Despite being married and having two children, Perkins allegedly engaged in several affairs with men during his lifetime. One of his most notable romantic relationships was reportedly with actor Tab Hunter. Perkins passed away in 1992 at the age of 60 due to AIDS-related complications. His illness, which was not disclosed to the public at the time, came as a shock to his fans. The book Split Image, The Life of Anthony Perkins by Charles Weinkoff delves into the intricacies of Anthony Perkins' life, shedding light on the challenges faced by gay actors in Hollywood during the mid-20th century. The book not only explores Perkins' career, which included a breakthrough role in Psycho, but also delves into the struggles he faced due to typecasting and the changing landscape of Hollywood. One of the central themes of the book is the closeted life led by many gay actors during that era. It vividly portrays the secrecy, arranged dates with starlets for magazines, and constant fear of being exposed by scandalous publications. Perkins, like many others, had to maintain a facade of heterosexuality in order to protect his career. The book also reveals the often tumultuous relationships Perkins had with men during this period. It describes encounters in Times Square gay porno theaters, arranged dates with starlets to maintain appearances, and the careful balancing act that Perkins and others had to perform in order to keep their private lives hidden. While the book examines the complexities of Perkins' relationships, it also highlights his ambition and determination to succeed in Hollywood. Coming out as gay in the 50s or 60s would have undoubtedly spelled the end of his career, and Perkins was determined to achieve stardom. One of the most puzzling aspects of Perkins' life explored in the book is his marriage to Barry Berenson in 1973. Despite skepticism on the part of friends, the marriage appeared to be more than a showbiz sham. Berenson pursued Perkins relentlessly, and the couple had two sons. By all accounts, Perkins was a devoted husband and father, though his gay friends had their doubts about his fidelity. Split Image provides a comprehensive look into Perkins' double life, exposing the challenges faced by gay actors in Hollywood during a time when coming out was simply not an option for most. The book's release followed a 1990 National Enquirer story that broke the news of Perkins' battle with AIDS, which ultimately led to his death in 1992. Split Image highlights the complexity of Perkins' public and private lives, offering a nuanced perspective on the ambiguity of the homosexual closet, a topic that remains relevant and thought-provoking. Number 2. Richard Pryor and Marlon Brando May Have Had an Encounter in February 2018, Jennifer Pryor, the widow of the legendary comedian Richard Pryor, made headlines by confirming that her husband had had an intimate affair with the iconic actor Marlon Brando during the 1970s. Pryor addressed this revelation in response to comments made by Quincy Jones during an interview with Vulture. Jones had alluded to Brando's involvement with numerous high-profile men, including Pryor. Quincy Jones stated, quote, He'd F anything. Anything. He'd F a mailbox. James Baldwin, Richard Pryor, Marvin Gaye. These comments sparked public interest and discussion about the relationships Brando had had during his lifetime. Jennifer Pryor corroborated Jones's statement, affirming that Richard Pryor had never hidden his sexuality from their close circle of friends. She mentioned that Pryor had documented his relationships with men in his diaries. In a response to TMZ, Jennifer Pryor made a lighthearted comment about the 1970s drug culture, saying, quote, It was the 70s. Drugs were still good, especially quaaludes. If you did enough cocaine, you'd F a radiator and send it flowers in the morning. This comment reflected the freewheeling spirit of the era. 
Jennifer and Richard Pryor were married in the early 1980s and then again in 2001, with their marriage lasting until Pryor's passing in 2005. Pryor was known for his influential career in comedy and was married multiple times, fathering seven children. Number 3. Raymond Burr met the man who would be his life partner in 1960. Raymond Burr, renowned for his portrayal of iconic TV characters like Perry Mason and Robert Ironside, was a prominent figure in American television during the 50s and 60s. He gained fame for his role as Perry Mason, a brilliant defense attorney who never lost a case. In 1948, Burr married Isabella Ward, but their marriage was short-lived and ended in divorce. It was during the production of Perry Mason in 1960 that Burr met fellow actor Robert Benavides. The two actors formed a deep and enduring bond, remaining together until Burr's death in 1993. While Burr often referred to Benavides as his business partner, their relationship extended far beyond a professional partnership. Burr and Benavides purchased land together in the 1980s and embarked on a venture that would see them establish a vineyard in California's Sonoma County. Their partnership was not just limited to business, but was also a romantic and lifelong commitment. Throughout his career, Burr took an unconventional approach to handling questions about his personal life, particularly regarding his sexuality. At a time when being openly gay in Hollywood was often stigmatized and detrimental to one's career, Burr chose to create a fabricated narrative to conceal his homosexuality. He claimed to have been married to a Scottish actress who tragically perished in a plane crash in 1943, alongside the famous actor Leslie Howard. Burr's story went on to include fictional wives and even a fictional deceased son. In reality, Burr had been married once, briefly, to an aspiring actress, and their marriage had ended in divorce. His elaborate fabrications about multiple marriages and tragic losses were part of a strategy to deflect attention from his personal life and maintain his public image. Despite the need to create a facade, Burr was known as a likable individual in the industry, and he found happiness in his long-term relationship with Benavides. Their partnership, both personally and professionally, remained strong for decades, challenging societal norms. Raymond Burr passed away in 1993. Number 4. Rumors About Clark Gable's Preferences Despite being married five times and having two children, Gable was notorious for his reputation as a ladies' man, often pursuing relationships with Hollywood starlets. However, rumors circulated about Gable's sexual preferences, suggesting he may have been willing to engage in encounters with men for career advancement. One notable same-sex encounter is reported to have occurred between Gable and actor William Haynes. Haynes was openly gay in his personal life and was a friend of Joan Crawford. Another incident involving Gable and his sensitivity towards his sexuality allegedly occurred in 1938 during the filming of Gone with the Wind. George Cukor, who was a close friend of Haynes, was working on the film. At a party, a friend of Cukor's reportedly exclaimed, quote, Oh, George is directing one of Billy's old tricks, referring to Gable's previous involvement with Haynes. When word of this remark reached Gable, he was said to have been outraged and refused to return to the set until Kukor was replaced as director. Gable is quoted as saying, I won't be directed by a fairy. I have to work with a real man. Victor Fleming was brought in to finish directing the film. Gable's early life was marked by difficult circumstances, including an unconventional upbringing, the loss of his mother shortly after his birth, and challenging jobs, such as working as a lumberjack. He left his tough, working-class background to pursue a career in acting. He had a complex relationship with his father, who often criticized him and referred to him as a sissy. During his early years in Hollywood, Gable had multiple relationships, including a marriage of convenience to Josephine Dillon, an acting coach who claimed she would make an actor out of him. Gable later claimed that that marriage was never consummated. Gable's first possibly homosexual relationship is said to have occurred during his time with a roving acting troupe when he was romantically involved with actor Earl Larimore. Additionally, Gable had a close relationship with actor Rod LaRoque while working on the film Forbidden Paradise which could also be interpreted as a homosexual relationship. 
Throughout the 1920s and early 1930s, Gable worked in theater touring companies and films. His breakthrough came with It Happened One Night. Gable's iconic scene in the film, where he removes his shirt without an undershirt, further solidified his image as a manly leading actor. William Faulkner, the renowned writer, befriended Gable in Hollywood during the mid-1930s. Faulkner, along with Ben Watson, reportedly hunted with Gable, suggesting a close bond between the men. While Gable was known to have had relationships with both men and women, David Brett, a biographer, labeled him as bisexual because of his involvement with individuals of both genders. In later years, Gable had a close confidant and companion in Ben Maddox, a syndicated journalist. Maddox played a role in protecting Gable's secrets, while sometimes compromising other people's heterosexual affairs for tabloid fodder. Despite his numerous affairs and marriages, Gable was famously wed to actress Carol Lombard, whom he considered the love of his life. Lombard once quipped disparagingly about Gable's manhood, saying, quote, If he was one inch shorter, we'd be talking about the Queen of Hollywood. Gable's final film, The Misfits, saw him forming an unlikely friendship with gay co-star Montgomery Cliff, while also dealing with the challenges posed by co-star Marilyn Monroe's substance abuse issues. Number 5. Cary Grant stayed with actor Randolph Scott for 12 years. Cary Grant's sexual tastes have been a subject of debate and rumor. He famously lived with actor Randolph Scott for 12 years, beginning their cohabitation in 1932 after meeting on the set of Hot Saturday. They resided together in a mansion affectionately nicknamed Bachelor Hall in the Los Feliz section of Los Angeles. Despite his public image as a suave and debonair ladies' man, rumors about Grant's relationships with men circulated within the Hollywood community. In 1986, during an interview with Barbara Walters, Grant made a groundbreaking statement about his sexuality, saying, quote, Everyone says I'm gay, and I guess I am, but I don't really know. This admission was remarkable for its time and contributed to more open discussions about sexuality in Hollywood. The relationship between Scott and Grant raised eyebrows in Hollywood during the 1930s and continued despite both men marrying women during that period. They even posed for fan magazines and were featured as budding movie stars. George Burns, a friend of Grant, is often cited as a source of information regarding Grant's homosexuality. Biographer Charles Higgum, known for his work in print journalism, highlighted how The Lonely Heart, a biography of Grant, contributed to decades of rumors about his sexuality. Higgum suggested that J. Edgar Hoover may have fallen in love with the book's author, John Eliot, and tried to protect him. Higgum and Eliot's conclusions in the book suggested that Grant's homosexuality was more pronounced in the early part of his life. There were claims that Grant was in close proximity to a young male during the Manson murders, according to Eliot. While Grant's behavior appeared more heterosexual in the latter part of his life, he seemed more concerned with being true to himself regardless of his sexual orientation, be it gay or straight. He hoped people would pay attention to him for who he was rather than his sexual preferences. Although Grant and Scott only appeared in one film together, Grant later claimed to have fallen in love with Grace Kelly after decades of starring in over 70 films. Despite being bisexual and married five times, Hollywood insiders often regarded Grant as a gay man. His relationship with Scott was a source of controversy in 1930s Hollywood, and it persisted through several of their marriages to women. According to Mark Elliott's book, Cary Grant, Grant's Secret Sixth Marriage, Grant had a sexual relationship with Scott after they met on the set of Hot Saturday. Photographs taken in 1933 of the two actors at home and on the beach, along with Scott's decision to continue living with Grant even after Grant's marriage to actress Virginia Sherrill, fueled the rumors. Hollywood director George Cukor, himself openly gay, remarked on their relationship saying, quote, Oh, Carrie won't talk about it. At most, he'll say they did some wonderful pictures together. But Randolph will admit it to a friend. Jerome Zerb, a photographer, spent what he referred to as, quote, three gay months in the movie colony and took numerous photographs of Grant and Scott, which were seen as indicative of their involvement in the gay scene. 
according to William J. Mann's book, Behind the Screen, How Gays and Lesbians Shaped Hollywood, 1910 to 1969. While Scott and Grant stopped living together in 1944, they remained close friends throughout their lives. Number six, Montgomery Clift possibly preferred both men and women. Montgomery Clift, the enigmatic heartthrob of the 1950s and a four-time Academy Award-nominated actor, maintained a private personal life that kept his dating life out of the scandal papers. Unlike many of his Hollywood peers, Clift resided in New York, further shielding his personal life from public scrutiny. Throughout his career, Clift was linked to Elizabeth Taylor in a seemingly will-they-or-won't-they relationship. Hollywood insiders were aware of rumors surrounding Cliff's preferences, which were not strictly straight. Debbie Reynolds, in her memoir, recalled seeing Cliff and Taylor engaged in intimate behavior, noting that Cliff had both boyfriends and girlfriends. She stated, quote, Even though Monty had boyfriends as well as girlfriends, it was obvious that he and Elizabeth had been intimate. Elizabeth could seduce any man, gay or straight. For years, a cult of personality had surrounded Montgomery Cliff, focusing on his perceived miseries and portraying him as a beautiful but tormented soul. His exceptional talent and good looks captivated audiences, while his involvement with stars like Elizabeth Taylor fueled rumors about his personal life. The documentary Making Montgomery Cliff takes a different perspective on the actor's life, sifting through a vast family archive to present an alternative narrative Jack Larson, known for playing Jimmy Olsen on the 1950s TV series Adventures of Superman, recalled Cliff's carefree nature and mentioned that Monty was not worried about being gay. Larson emphasized that Cliff had a great sense of humor and was quite different from the public's perception. In a taped phone call with Monty's elder brother Brooks, their mother Ethel Fogg Sonny Cliff casually mentioned that Monty had identified as homosexual from a very early age, perhaps 12 or 13. Even in his on-screen roles, Clift was known to push boundaries. For example, in the 1948 film Red River, he and John Ireland engaged in daringly flirtatious scenes with innuendo. Clift was less closeted compared to some of his gay contemporaries in Hollywood like Rock Hudson, and he was comfortable being himself. In 1935, at the age of 13, he made his Broadway debut in New York in Fly Away Home. Hollywood soon beckoned with roles like Tom Sawyer, but Clift, uninterested in studio contracts, declined several lucrative offers, including roles in East of Eden, On the Waterfront, and Sunset Boulevard. Throughout his Hollywood career, Clift remained an outsider, opting for single picture deals, rewriting dialogue, and commuting between New York and Hollywood. He lived modestly in a tiny New York apartment, adhering to a simple diet and spending his time reading literature and history. Number 7. Rock Hudson kept his sexuality a secret throughout his career. Rock Hudson, the matinee idol and Oscar-nominated actor, led a double life throughout his career, concealing his homosexuality until his death from AIDS in 1985 at the age of 59. Despite a three-year marriage to Phyllis Gates in the 1950s, insiders in Hollywood were aware of his true orientation. Gates discovered her husband's sexuality and confronted him about it. Their dialogue was recorded by a private investigator named Fred Otash, hired by Gates to investigate Hudson. Her suspicions were initially aroused after Hudson took a Rorschach test. This episode and many more secrets about Hudson's life have come to light in a documentary titled Rock Hudson, All That Heaven Allowed, directed by Stephen Kajak. Hudson's fame as an all-American screen icon endures, with starring roles in films like Giant alongside Elizabeth Taylor, Pillow Talk with Doris Day, and numerous other hits of the 50s and 60s, as well as his television series Macmillan and White. However, his legacy also includes revealing his AIDS diagnosis, which helped raise awareness of the disease. In a 1983 interview, Hudson candidly discussed his time working with James Dean on Giant, stating that he didn't particularly like Dean personally. Their relationship was strained, as Dean believed Hudson was hypocritical in maintaining a heterosexual facade in public, while privately making advances toward him. 
Interestingly, Dean had a relationship with a gay radio executive who was friends with Hudson's agent, Henry Wilson. Despite his less than positive feelings toward Dean, Hudson cherished his leading lady, Elizabeth Taylor. Their friendship endured until Hudson's final days and inspired Taylor to establish the Foundation for AIDS Research. To maintain his facade as a heterosexual leading man, Hudson entered into a presumably arranged marriage with Phyllis Gates, who was Henry Wilson's secretary. However, the marriage lasted only three years before ending in divorce. Gates later claimed that she'd been duped and had no idea that Hudson was gay all along, a statement that raises skepticism given that many in Hollywood, from bit players to assistants, were well aware of Hudson's true orientation. Hudson's personal life, known to friends and acquaintances, contrasted sharply with the tabloid narratives presented to the American public. He was known as a quote-unquote manizer, engaging in relationships with young and attractive men. Hudson had a contact in West Hollywood who could quickly arrange for handsome companions, a fact revealed in a recorded phone call between Hudson and an unnamed acquaintance. Despite his public image as a gay bachelor, Hudson's private life was far more complex. Number 8. Spencer Tracy may have hidden his preferences due to his religious faith. Spencer Tracy enjoyed a four-decade-long career that earned him nine Academy Award nominations and two wins. Despite his professional success, his personal life was marked by intriguing rumors surrounding his sexuality, which he may have kept hidden due to his Roman Catholic faith. Tracy's marriage to Louise Treadwell produced two children, but the couple never divorced, citing Tracy's Catholic upbringing as the reason for their estrangement. In Hollywood, Tracy gained a reputation as a hard partying star and was romantically linked to starlets such as Ingrid Bergman and Hedy Lamarr. However, the most compelling speculation surrounds Tracy's alleged long-term relationship with actor John Derrick. Additionally, there have been claims that his relationship with the legendary Katherine Hepburn was carefully managed by the studio. So the question arises, was Spencer Tracy bisexual? Some may argue that his sexual orientation doesn't matter. Writer Amy Fine Collins delved into this topic in the April issue of Vanity Fair, revealing insights from the late Richard Gully, who was an assistant to Jack Warner and a well-connected figure in Hollywood. Gully's casual mention of Tracy's sexuality in the article stirred media attention and reactions. Hepburn herself was reportedly upset about the claims, and Tracy's daughter, Susanna Tracy, dismissed them as absurd. Tracy was undoubtedly a complex individual, marked by occasional bouts of deep depression. He remained devoted to his Catholic faith, never divorcing his wife despite his relationships with Hepburn and Loretta Young, with whom he had a serious fling during the filming of Man's Castle. Tracy also battled alcoholism and once infamously trashed a film set during a late night visit. Yet when you watch Tracy on screen, his personal struggles vanish and he becomes the character he portrays. His peers recognize his talent, with Humphrey Bogart stating, quote, Spence is the best we have because you don't see the mechanism at work. The allure of classic Hollywood lies in its presentation of stars as larger than life figures closer to dreams than reality. However, the temptation to out these stars from that era raises questions about our modern fixation on categorizing individuals as either gay or straight. The truth is, gender identity can be fluid, and most people don't fit neatly into these binary categories. This perspective was understood by Hollywood in the 1930s when rigidly wholesome public personas were paramount. Ultimately, the question remains whether Spencer Tracy was gay or not. That question remains shrouded in mystery. Number 9. James Dean Engaged in Intimate Relationships with Both Women and Men James Dean, the iconic actor known for his roles in just three films, continues to be a symbol of the disillusioned rebel, even in the 21st century. Though he tragically passed away at the young age of 24 in 1955, millions still remember him. Throughout his life and beyond, rumors and speculation have swirled around his sexuality, with no definitive answers regarding his identification. Since the 70s, several books have attempted to shed light on the private life of this actor. 
One such book is The Real James Dean, written in 1975 by Jonathan Gilmore, a close friend of Dean's. In the book, Gilmore claimed that he and Dean engaged in intimate encounters. However, despite these accounts, Dean's sexuality remains a subject of ongoing debate and uncertainty. Publicly, Dean dated several women, including actresses Barbara Glenn, Pierre Angeli, and Ursula Andress. However, it's widely acknowledged that he was also secretly involved with men. When questioned about his sexuality, Dean responded, quote, No, I am not a homosexual, but I'm also not going to go through life with one hand tied behind my back. One of the significant relationships that's come to light is his connection with William Bast. Bast, who was also Dean's roommate, later admitted to sexual experimentation with Dean. Bast described their relationship as complex, and it's been suggested that it was somewhat incestuous. Another biography, Boulevard of Broken Dreams, The Life, Times, and Legend of James Dean by Paul Alexander, proposed that Dean had a relationship with Pastor James D. Word. Elizabeth Taylor, his co-star in Giant, made a public statement suggesting that Dean had confided in her about being sexually abused by a priest after his mother's death. Warner Brothers, with whom Dean had a contract, promoted him alongside gay actors Rock Hudson and Tab Hunter, marketing the three as the studio's, quote, eligible bachelors. Biographer Darwin Porter alleged that Dean had a sadomasochistic relationship with actor Marlon Brando. While the director of Rebel Without a Cause, Nicholas Ray, stated that Dean was bisexual, there's still ongoing debate about whether Dean's relationships with men were primarily for career advancement or reflective of his true sexual orientation. Nevertheless, Dean's enduring legacy has earned him the title of, quote, the male gay icon of all time, according to the Gay Times Readers Awards. Dean's untimely death certainly hasn't diminished his presence in the public consciousness, nor has it quelled discussions about his sexual orientation. The question of whether James Dean was gay remains unanswered, leaving him forever a rebel without a cause and a rebel without a label. Number 10. Marlon Brando Marlon Brando is acknowledged for his extraordinary acting abilities. While he was married three times during his life, rumors have long swirled about his sexual preferences. Many have suggested that Brando may have been bisexual. One of the most persistent rumors was his supposed affair with James Dean, another iconic actor of that time. However, allegations in Darwin Porter's biography, Brando Unzip, suggest that Brando had intimate relationships with other Hollywood legends, including Cary Grant, Montgomery Cliff, and Sir John Gilligood. In a 1976 interview with a French journalist, Brando openly acknowledged his experiences with homosexuality, stating, quote, Homosexuality is so much in fashion, it no longer makes news. Like a large number of men, I too have had homosexual experiences, and I am not ashamed. He may have slept with comedian Richard Pryor. In a surprising revelation, musician Quincy Jones claimed in a 2018 interview that Marlon Brando and Richard Pryor had been involved in a sexual relationship. Following the interview, Pryor's widow, Jennifer Lee Pryor, confirmed the claim via a tweet. While Pryor's daughter, Rain, denied the allegations and accused her father's widow of tarnishing his name, it certainly raised eyebrows in Hollywood and among fans. He may have had an s and relationship with James Dean. Brando's complex personal life allegedly included a homoerotic kinky side. In the book, James Dean, Tomorrow Never Comes by Darwin Porter and Danforth Prince, a claim is made that Brando engaged in a dominant, submissive s and relationship with James Dean. According to the authors, while Dean was emotionally invested in the relationship, Brando was more interested in the idea of toying with Dean's submissive nature. He may have had a romantic relationship with writer James Baldwin. Quincy Jones's interview not only mentioned Brando's involvement with Richard Pryor, but also suggested a romantic link between Brando and the acclaimed writer and social critic James Baldwin. Jones made the bold statement, quote, He'd sleep with anything, anything, even a mailbox. James Baldwin, Richard Pryor, Marvin Gaye. While Marvin Gaye's sister vehemently denied Jones's claims, the nature of Brando's relationship with James Baldwin remains somewhat ambiguous. 
Brando and Baldwin were known for their close friendship. Baldwin, who never publicly defined his sexuality, was rumored to have had homosexual relationships with other men. In a 1990 interview, Brando expressed great admiration for Baldwin, saying, quote, If you wish to ask me what I cared about most now, if you ask me to state what was important or lasting, it would have to be that I walked and sat and dreamed next to a man named James Baldwin. He may have been involved with Cary Grant. According to Brando Unzipped, Brando allegedly had sexual relationships with several quote-unquote straight old Hollywood actors. Among them were Montgomery Clift and Cary Grant. The book's claims include a brief fling between Brando and Cary Grant, which reportedly took place during a weekend in San Francisco. Grant was also rumored to have pursued actor Stuart Granger, who Porter suggests became another of Brando's conquests. It's worth noting that Porter's reputation is built on quote-unquote exposing homosexual relationships in Hollywood, and his claims often come with a shadow of doubt. That wraps up our countdown for today. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more fascinating stories from the world of entertainment. Now, we want to hear from you. Which revelation shocked you the most? Share your thoughts in the comments below, and if you have any more facts or stories from Hollywood's past, drop them in the comments as well. Thank you again for watching, and until next time,